So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the team planner table templates in Google Sheets. They currently have three available, goals, budget, and resource planning. And then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna walk you through some of the major features of tables, as well as how to modify this for your own use. But before we jump into that, not everyone has access to tables yet. If you do not, and you will know if you do, if you see tables here under insert, if you do not, make sure to check out the link in the description below, and then you can download this template directly to your Google Drive and start using these tables. So let's go ahead and jump right in. First up, we have the goals template. And so this allows you to enter a goal name, select a priority, and you can tag a person in this goal using the name smart chip. And so you can do the at symbol and select somebody, or if you prefer, you can just change this to a text column and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Um, you can just do text here. Um, and then I'll show you the rest of those column types here in a minute. So then you can select a status here, enter a start date and an end date. You can select a file and you can just do file like that and link it there just like that. Uh, and you can also add your notes for that goal as well. Next up, we have the budget sheet. And so the budget sheet allows you to select a month here and then enter your actual income your projected income, your actual and projected expenses. And then you can select the status here at under or over budget. And then you can do your end of month budget. And then if you have someone that is on the approval thing, you can put their name here or who approved it. And then you can add some related files here, just like I showed you in the last one, and then add your notes. And then finally, we have our resource planning. And so again, you can use the smart chip to tag the name and then assign their role. And then you can do how many hours a week they work, uh, total hours that they have available, and then how many hours for projects they have allocated already. And then that will give you a capacity that you can use in a formula here uh, to show how much capacity you have. And depending upon your structure, either capacity available or capacity used or both if you prefer. So next, let's go ahead and show you some of the quick top level features of tables. And so one that is pretty cool is this group by view. And so you can do it either from this views icon here and create group by view and select a column or you can go to any column and then you can group by column here. And so we could group by status, for example, and then it throws them into groups. And so what we'll see here is if we add a couple more here and we could add a couple more at risk and maybe one more on track, we'll see a little pop up here saying your group is out of sync. If you click refresh, then it automatically shuffles those into the correct places and it's all good to go. So this group by is a pretty cool feature with tables and um, definitely resolves a lot of things that we've struggled with and tried to use pivot tables to get around. Um, and so finally we have it in a cool usable view. And so this is similar to the filter views we've had in the past. And so you can save this view and call it group by status. And kind of like filter views, you can also select um, or restrict certain, certain things with these filters. Um, for example, if you don't want that status there or that priority there, you can do that. Um, you can reselect again if you want to see all of them and so forth. So whenever you're done, you can close it out either using the exit button over here on the top right or views and then you can exit view there. And so it's always accessible here, whatever ones you have saved, and then you can always create a new one each time that you're doing that as well. And so another thing with tables is, and you've kind of already seen this, but filters, where we used to do tables with a filter at the top and filter that way. So tables is a little different. The filters are built in. Um, and so if you click on this drop down, and then there is the filter column, and then you can select like you did normally with the filters. Next up, let me just show you how to insert and delete rows and columns, and then we'll circle back around and go through column types and how to modify these. And so let's go ahead and insert a column just in the middle here. 
And so it's just saying column nine. Um, and so we can call this column whatever we want. One thing to note is you cannot leave it blank. You do have to fill in something. And so we'll call this new call just like that. And then it's fine. So let's go ahead and delete that column. And then let's just take a look at what happens if we're next to a table. And then we add new call here. It doesn't do anything. Um, but if we put it in the column directly next to the table, then it automatically incorporates it. And so finally, let's go ahead and look at adding some new rows. And so you can just add some more at the bottom like that. Uh, and you can also delete them. And then you could even insert some in the middle if you like, just like that. So now let's go ahead and look at column types. And so if you go on here, this drop down, there's column types, and you can see a bunch of different ones available. So some of them you already seen through here, like the date ones and such. And so let's go ahead and just walk through them one by one. Let's actually add a new column, and then I'll kind of demo this as we go. It's a new call, and then we can see uh, numbers. So you can do a number like that. Let's go ahead and show placeholders. Um, so these placeholders just puts in a little default um, placeholder value. It kind of gives you a little guidance on what to enter. And so numbers show up like that and then percentage shows up like this. And so if you just type in like that, it'll automatically add the percentage. If you double click, you can see, um, let's go ahead and try this again. If you just start typing in, you can see that percentage sign automatically shows up. But if you double click, it does it goes away. And so if you just put in 10, that shows up as 10,000%. So if you double click, you just need to make sure you add that percent there. Otherwise, if you just start typing, it picks up automatically. All right, so let's go ahead and go to currency. So currency is straightforward. You can just type in uh, and you can double click and it doesn't matter. It still shows up directly fine. So we can do text like it was before and then it shows when you do text, the placeholder is whatever the column name is. So if we do new call two, then it shows up like that. And then we have dates. And so we've had dates over here. And so once you put in a date, um, it automatically shows that pop up for that date picker. And then you can do date time. Um, unfortunately, date time still does not allow you to select the time. And so what you'd have to do in this regard is something like 531.24 um, and then like 1400 hours for two o'clock. So it's a little aggravating. I hope they, they modify that at some point, but that's how it works for now. And then you can do time and you can do 7 a.m. Um, just like that. And then drop downs. And so um, this is how you add drop downs. You can select the options you want and do these. One thing to note is you can still select different display styles, but however, you cannot restrict people from entering. Data does not match the drop downs. So, so that could be a little interesting. I'm not quite sure why they decide to do that, but that is how that works. Um, you can do check boxes like that. And then, of course, Google Smart Chips. Um, so people, and you just do at the person's name, and it'll pop up the chip. Files, finance, place, and rating. So I'll just show rating real quick. And this allows you to select a rating. And then finally, you can do none if you don't want anything in there. And so that is how that works. And then, of course, the placeholder isn't showing up immediately. So I'll go here and do show placeholder. So let's go ahead and get rid of this just for a moment. And then let's take a look at how to reference a table in formulas. And so we could use a couple different ones. Let's just do a count of these statuses. Uh, maybe add a couple more um, like that. And then let's just, first of all, name this table. And so it's called team goals. And so we could use that, but I'm just gonna show you how to rename this. So we're just gonna call this goals. And then if we open up a new tab, we can pull a unique on our goals. And then you can see, actually it shows up with the columns inside brackets. And so we can select that status inside that unique and see those statuses. So let's go ahead and add another one just to show you how that works. Waiting on third party. And then we can select that for this one. And we go back and we can see that pulls in automatically. So to wrap this up, I'm just going to show you how to use this in account tips as well. And then we'll get this finished up for you. So goals and status, and then we'll just compare it to our values here and show two, five, three, and one for the number we have in each status. 
All right, so that's it for today. Um, just keep in mind with these, this does work in all the different kind of formulas like filters and query and so forth. And so um, I'm not going to go into full detail in that today. I am going to release the video shortly with a little more deep dive into the tables feature that they just released. Um, some of the quirks I've noticed and just some of the ways to better use it. But hopefully I've given you enough of a taste today that you can start using this efficiently in your own projects. So if this video is helpful for you, make sure to like and subscribe. And then if you want to check out some of the other templates that I've um, already made videos for, you can also check out the other videos on my YouTube for that. And I also have links for those templates in those videos as well. And then um, as always, I have a lot of other videos on both Google Sheets and AppScript if um, you would find those helpful as well. So that's it for this video. Make sure to drop a comment below if you've started using tables and you have any feedback. I wanna hear what you guys' comments are, anything you've run into, um, so I can dig into it for myself as well and just try to help collaborate and work this out so we can all benefit from this new feature. So thanks for watching and have a great day.